William Saliba new Arsenal contract? The decision made by Arsenal to loan out young William Saliba this season caused a lot of controversy. With the centre back now at Marseille and thriving, many fans have started to question does he have a long term Arsenal future? So today we will find out what Mr Chris Wheatley has been saying and what striker do Arsenal want to sign? Let's find out in the latest Arsenal news today. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14 and welcome back to your boys channel. I understand this shock, it's not quite the normal Babs14 HQ. I'm actually not going to be at home for the next few days. I want a cheeky little break or a holiday. So your boys still here provide you guys with the Arsenal related content. So make sure to go down there and smash a like on the video if you do enjoy. And also do subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Because we are still on the road to 60,000 subscribers. Okay then, getting into the Arsenal news and starting off with one William Saliba. When Arsenal signed young William Saliba for £30 million, many Arsenal fans were very excited. But fast forward two years and Saliba is still yet to play a single minute of professional football for Arsenal Football Club. As it stands right now, he is on loan at Marseille with no option or obligation to buy. But does he have an Arsenal future? Well, in a Football London Q&A by Chris Wheatley on William Saliba, he says, The plan would be for him to come back to Arsenal next summer and a decision will be made on whether he is offered a new contract or not, expecting talks to begin towards the end of his loan spell at Marseille. So the plan is for Saliba to come back to Arsenal at the end of the season. But as Arsenal fans will know, this is deja vu season because the same was said last season and as it stands, Saliba is still not given a chance at Arsenal Football Club. Now, Edu Gaspar and Nicola Teta have always made it clear they still believe Saliba is part of the long term plans at Arsenal. And the logic behind loaning him to Marseille for the season, in their eyes, was he can get a full season of non stop football, whereas at Arsenal, we have to fight with Ben White and Gabriel. So, as it stands, he was not a guaranteed starter at Arsenal, whereas at Marseille, he was. And so, in their eyes and their eyes only, they wanted to see him play a full season instead rather than in and out in the Arsenal team. And that is their logic, whether you agree or you disagree agree is down to you. In terms of Saliba's loan spell so far at Marseille, 4 games in total, 3 wins, 1 draw, 0 losses and 1 of only 3 ever presence in the Marseille side. Saliba has started off pretty well at Marseille and their fans and the club in general are already in love with this player and if you go onto social media, many of their fans actually cannot believe they have somehow got Saliba on loan in the first place. With that love and admiration for the player and the potential of Saliba, it's only right that Marseille want to sign him on a permanent. In terms of Arsenal, they've always made it clear there was no option or obligation to buy during negotiations because apparently Edu Gaspar and Arteta still want to see Saliba as a long-term Arsenal player. Once Saliba's loan expires, you'll have a whole season under his belt and at 21 years of age and two years left on his Arsenal contract, there is more than enough time for Saliba to make it at Arsenal. But most importantly for me, this falls into the hands of the player. And if he wants to stay at Marseille, of course, a massive French club, a club that he's playing at week in, week out, whereas that's not the case at Arsenal. For me, this all falls into the hands of William Saliba, but let's see what Mikel Arteta and Edu Gaspar have implied if they're even still here. But what do you guys think I want to happen with the future of William Saliba? And come the end of his loan spell, are you giving him a brand new Arsenal contract? Or on the opposite, are you open to letting him go and letting him leave Arsenal Football Club for a permanent? transfer. For me, I have always made it clear I am a massive fan of the Mbappe of centre-backs. Are Arsenal moving into a 4-3-3? Well, as Arteta said this in December, we want to move to a 4-3-3, but for that, you need a lot of specialised players in every position. But now, in five or six positions, we don't have it. Now, this was back in December 2020, and since then, Arsenal have signed a new goalkeeper, a right-back, a centre-back, a central midfielder, and even a brand new central attacking midfielder slash number eight. The question now must be asked, do Arsenal have the fundamentals and the players to move into the 4-3-3 system? Nikola Arteta himself used to work under Pep Guardiola and he of course was the manager that made the 4-3-3 system famous in the first place at Barcelona and Man City. Is it time for Arsenal to transition into that system? Well funny enough against Norwich in the second half, after Arteta brought on Smith Rowe and Thomas Partey, we moved into the 4-3-3 where we made an announced White, Gabriel and Tierney as a back full, party Smith and Odegaard as a free midfield and a Saka Oba Pepe front free. When Arsenal wanted and needed a goal most, Arteta had to go into the system for the extra creativity. Now of course on one hand you have to look at desperation, Arsenal needed and wanted a goal so badly. But on the second hand with Arteta saying before in the past he wants to move to the system, the fact that he's now starting to play it in game could be almost an indication that it might be time to move on to it. 
but against teams that are better on the counter attack we could be in trouble what do you guys think Mikel Arteta should do should he stick with a 4 to 3 one or is it time to move into the long awaited 4 3 3 system okay then moving on let's discuss Takehiro Tomiyasu and Emerson Royale both North London clubs signed a right back this summer it was Emerson Royale from Nando's FC and Takehiro Tomiyasu for Arsenal Football Club and the funniest thing about it was that both right backs were linked to both clubs during the transfer window and as the Athletic are reporting today at one stage Arsenal were in advanced talks with Barcelona over a potential swap deal involving Emerson Royale and Hector Bellerin. Royale had been long admired by Arsenal's recruitment team who considered his dynamic style of play a good fit for English football. So Arsenal were in advanced negotiations for Emerson Royale but why were things not meant to be? Well the Athletic also say that Edu oversaw talks with Barcelona and at one stage an agreement was considered likely but ultimately Arsenal stalled with manager Mikel Arteta unconvinced about whether Royale would prove a good tactical fit for his preferred system. So Edu Gaspar was pushing for Emerson Royale but Mikel Arteta wasn't fully convinced. Interesting FC indeed. The Athletics say Arsenal then turned to Tomiyasu. The deal accelerated dramatically the night before deadline day as Arteta was a driving force behind the club's decision to pursue the deal. As Arteta was insistent that Tomiyasu, unlike Royale, was the right fit for the Arsenal team. So it seems as if Edu Gaspar and Mikel Arteta were both on different wavelengths when it came to right backs but it was once again the Arsenal manager who won out and got the play he wanted and so firstly what does it say about the power that Arteta has behind the scenes and secondly in terms of Edu Gaspar I mean looking at the first few games I'm not saying that Tomiyasu is better than Emerson but personally I do believe Tomiyasu suits Arsenal a lot more than Emerson Royale and in terms of Edu of course he was also apparently pushing for Neto behind the scenes but once again it was Arteta who wanted Ramsdale and he got his player instead and one could now argue that Mikel Arteta has more power behind the scenes than Edu Gaspar but in terms of the Arsenal manager's talent ID the likes of Gabriel, Partey, Ben White, Tomiyasu and Aaron Ramsdale were all Mikel Arteta signings that he has pushed for with Sam Bean Tavares both being players that Arsenal have scouted and the likes of Willian, Cedric Suarez and Pablo Mori all players via agents. There is no coincidence the players that are not the best there are players almost signed as short term players and they all strike me as Edu Gaspar signings but once again this is just your boy's personal interpretation. But let's talk Arteta's talent ID down below in the comments and let's rate it out of 10 with 10 being fantastic and 1 being not good at all. Ramsdale on starting over Leno against Norwich. This might have just been a tactical tweak so it's my responsibility to force him in Mikel Arteta to carry on picking me which is something I have to do on a daily basis. Personally when Arsenal signed and Ramsdale a lot of fans like myself weren't fully convinced but since he has signed for Arsenal I will say I am a massive fan of his personality and his character. Ramso says you got to be ready to play as a goalkeeper you don't know when anything is going to happen I am ready every week so Aaron Ramso's almost put forward the gauntlet to Bert Leno I'm ready I'm here and this is now my position the fact that Arteta started Ramsdale over Leno on Sunday with Leno being fully fit and available for me it kind of confirmed that Ramsdale is going to be the number one as things stand I won't lie to you guys watch Ramsdale and go live at the Emirates Stadium I was a massive fan and Ramsdale almost gives his calming presence not just to the Arsenal team but even to the Arsenal fans and in terms of the Arsenal manager on if he plans to rotate the goalkeepers now I want to see how they perform now we need performances and we need to win football matches so whoever gives the better performances and whoever transmits the most confidence and is more reliable will play all that I am hearing here for me indicates that it might be the end of Bert Leno's Arsenal career his time might just be up but at the same time am I being too harsh is Arteta being too harsh let's have a discussion down below should Aaron Ramsdale be the Arsenal number one or is Bert Leno still in your eyes the Arsenal number one instead okay then moving on to the other Arsenal news and starting off with another brand new Adidas Arsenal kit as leaked images of the first official draft of Arsenal 2022 team guys jersey manufactured by Adidas is set to be launched in November so a brand new kit from Adidas and I'm not going to complain but this time but at this point it is starting to get very funny because at this point Arsenal actually have more kits that we have points in the Premier League in terms of the kit itself I'm not going to lie to you guys I'm personally not a massive fan of it but what do you think about this new sort of Arsenal kit are you a fan of it are you against it let's rate it out of 10 down below in the comments according to Fabrizio Romano Arsenal were keen to land Sammy Abraham but couldn't sell Lacazette 
the player held off as long as he could for Arsenal. So Arsenal wanted Tammy and Tammy wanted Arsenal, but Alexandre Lacazette was in the way. But that of course will not be the case next summer. As with Lacazette's contract set to expire, for me Arsenal will 100% sign a brand new centre forward. But who is that player going to be? One thing that we need to take note of is the fact that Edu Gaspar was in contact with the agent of Alexandre Isaac towards the start of last transfer window. The fact that Arsenal have shown the last summer they have money and they will spend it. For me my eyes are all looking at Alexander Isaac and seeing if Arsenal are going to make the move for the Swedish international striker come next summer. But let me make it clear if Arsenal want to sign a player the quality of Isak it is not going to be cheap. We're talking upwards of 70 to 80 million pounds. For that sort of price tag would you guys take Alexander Isaac at Arsenal Football Club? Or do you guys have another centre forward that you want to see Arsenal sign instead? But that is the video of them there. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And if you have, smash a like on it and do subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. If you want to follow your boy on them social medias, then the links will be down below in the description. But that was the latest Arsenal news. And even though your boy is on a low-key holiday, I'm still providing you guys with that content. So, um, lads, I will see you guys soon in a bit.